This is the fifth video in my love language and series on how to to grow in how you show and receive love in these different love languages. Today is all about touch. So just like I've said in my previous videos, a lot of times when somebody is struggling to give or receive a love language, there's an old trauma, there's old, there can be old shames, there can be modeling at play. But essentially, if you struggle with touch, I want you to go back in your history and look at Okay, well, was touch shown in my family of origin? Like when I was growing up, did my parents hug me or did, or did they, my parents, for example, kiss each other or model romantic touch with each other? If there was no romantic modeling, then it can feel foreign or uncomfortable. Like there could be, honestly, there, in some relationships, parents weren't sexual at all or romantic at all. And so whether they tell you that or not, you still see that. You still like basically are given this model for this is what a romantic relationship looks like. And so if they were struggling, um, then you can take some of that on as, as a, an adult now, basically of like, oh, this is how they handled things. So I didn't see that. So I don't know how to show that. Also, if you weren't touched much or shown touch, then that's kind of, that's a form of well, like touch neglect essentially you know that you you didn't get a space where you felt a sense of comfort and soothing growing up maybe you were cuddled with maybe you weren't uh you know like kissed or hugged you know there's there's reasonable ways like they're more familial ways to touch but again if you weren't touched growing up then now in a romantic relationship if that wasn't shown to you then it'll feel awkward it'll feel uncomfortable doing it because touch wasn't made comfortable to you um, the hard thing about touch, so as I was thinking about writing this video or putting this video together, is there are so many things that can be representative and why touch is a block for you. And so I'm only giving two small examples. Part of the reason I'm a sex therapist is, well, I'm here to help with all of the different traumas or shames around touch that could be represented um, for why you struggle with that and have a block there. So I guess my gentle nudge to you today is if you have any sort of old traumas or shames or just struggles around what does it mean to touch and how do I engage and touch in a way that feels good for me, I'd really like to invite you to come see me or come see a sex therapist of some sort um, because it's a very complex issue. That love language in particularly has, has elements of consent so if there are old ways that people have been harmed through rape or um, non-consensual touch, for example, or if there are ways that um, but, like touch didn't feel good in your body, like if you've had sensory issues, for example, there's a lot, there's so much, and it's such a loaded lot of language that like, I feel that one in particular, you just need help from somebody to explore because there can be such deep meanings around why you struggle with that particular love language and it's helpful it's it's important to get help and to not just sit with that all by yourself um so that's my gentle invitation but if you need if you need help figuring this love language out i need more than a five to six minute video to help you i need i need some time and i would love to help you with that if you would like to make an appointment with me, please submit a contact form at therapistinstlouis.com. And also, um, please watch some of my previous videos. I put out five. Uh, you can like and subscribe and look back at some of those old videos or check out new ones that are coming out.